Hello, everyone. My name is Wyatt Blackson. I'm a junior at ASU studying chemical engineering and working under Dr. Rotsky. Today, I will be presenting on the characterization of a silicon carbide powder. This project's motivation is to characterize an industrial source sample of silicon carbide using X-ray diffraction, abbreviated XRD, and thermogravimetric analysis dash differential scanning calorimetry, abbreviated TGA dash DSC. Silicon carbide, abbreviated SIC, is a ceramic used for abrasives, electrical components, and certain high temperature applications, such as brake discs, due to high level of hardness, temperature resistance, and corrosive resistance. Characterization is critical in ensuring a sample's purity. And if we attain an SIC of high purity, then next steps after characterization would involve performing calorimetric experiments and determining SIC's heat of formation by elements. Now, this value is quite important in understanding the thermodynamic properties that dictate silicon carbide. And together with its mechanical properties, it would be possible to develop trends and allow for the creation of silicon carbide with improved properties. XRD is a process in which a beam of x-rays are shot into a crystalline sample and their diffraction pattern and intensity are measured. These measurements give insight to the structure and composition of a material. Below in figure two is a simplified diagram of how the process of XRD works. An x-ray source emits incident x-rays at an angle of theta and the rays are diffracted by the sample and measured by an x-ray detector again at an angle of theta. The intensity of these rays are measured and plotted against two theta because the angle must be with respect to the incident rays rather than the sample. Thermogravimetric analysis dash differential scanning calorimetry, TGA dash TSC, is a process in which both heat flow and weight changes in a material are measured as a function of temperature and time in a controlled atmosphere. Now, these measurements provide insight into a material's composition, oxidative and thermal stability, as well as moisture content. Shown below in figure three is a very simplified diagram of how the TGA DSC works. Inside an insulated container are two crucibles, one containing a sample and the other is empty as a reference. First, when the sample crucible is not in the TGA DSC, the apparatus will increase in temperature and instruments will track the heat flow and changes in mass of the reference crucible. After the scan for the reference crucible is complete, the same process will be repeated for the sample crucible. This is done so that the sample and reference scans can be compared against each other and eliminate any sort of effects from the crucible so that what is remaining is only the data from the SIC sample itself. The SIC sample was uniformly plated on a silicon wafer and placed on a tray in the XRD. The XRD used was a Bruker D2 phaser and it performed a scan of the sample from 10 degrees to 80 degrees to theta at an increment of 0.01 degrees. Shown below is a photo of the XRD machine. For the TGA-DSC, roughly 12 milligrams of the SIC sample was taken and placed in a small crucible before being put inside the TGA-DSC. This project used a Ceterum Labsys Evo, as seen below, to scan our SIC sample from 30 degrees to 1200 degrees in an air-filled atmosphere. Our sample of silicon carbide powder, again, was provided by an industry source and is shown on the right. Shown is the XRT pattern from the SAC sample scanned from 10 degrees to 80 degrees to theta at an increment of 0.01 degrees. Now the peaks were identified using previous reference scans of SAC samples, and the sample appeared to contain three polymorphs of silicon carbide. 3C shown in the plot as a black triangle, 6H shown as a black square, and 4H shown as a black circle. Two peaks around 36 and 39 degrees did not match any reference SAC scans, and are labeled as red diamonds. Looking at the TGA DSC plot shown, the silicon carbide sample appears to lose mass in steps rather than all gradually over time. Here, it is broken down into six steps, each with varying levels of mass loss over temperature. There is an initial mass loss of 0.4% during the temperature increase of 30 to 120 degrees Celsius. Then a greater mass loss of 1.2% between 120 and 220 degrees. After the largest mass drop of 4% between 220 and 350 degrees. Then, during a much longer period of time between 350 and 715 degrees, there's only a 1% mass decrease. Following that is a similar mass decrease of 1.0% between 715 and 935 degrees, before a mass increase of 1% from 935 degrees to 1200 degrees. 
Shown previously in the XRD results, the sample is mostly silicon carbide containing three common polymorphs, 3C, 4H, and 6H. Here on the left shows the stacking sequence of each of these polymorphs. Each polymorph has a different symmetry and crystal structure, which also implies that their energy states are different. Currently, it is thought that the different SIC polymorphs present in a sample are by themselves not enough to significantly change the sample's heat of formation during calorimetric experiments. This is because although their energy states are different, it is thought that they are very close to each other and would not affect results. Also previously mentioned in the XRD scan are the two unidentified peaks labeled as red diamonds. Because these peaks did not match any SIC reference scans, it suggests that compounds other than SIC could be present within the sample. Now, with unknown other compounds present, their different energy state could be enough to alter the heat of formation, thus giving an inaccurate value and flawed understanding of SIC's thermodynamic properties. The TGADSC scan showed mass changes of SIC sample and steps, and each of which is thought to correspond to a different event. Outlined here, one through six, are the different steps, the corresponding mass losses, temperature ranges, and what they're thought to be, along with reasoning. Now, step one is most likely evaporation of surface water present on SIC, which would be the first to go in a temperature increase. Now, steps two and three are very close to each other in average change of mass loss over temperature, and therefore are both likely to be evaporation of bulk water that the SIC had absorbed throughout itself. The decomposition steps four and five are a little more mysterious, and the cause is uncertain. Now, these decompositions could be associated with the impurities present within the sample that the XRD pattern had suggested, or it could be more residual water loss. Step six is the first mass gain throughout the scan. And given that the high temperature it takes place at and the air-filled atmosphere is most certainly an oxidation on the surface of the SIC that causes this. Now, in all, it is thought that roughly five to 6% of the sample mass is water from these results. The XRD and the TGA DSC experiments were able to determine presence of multiple SIC polymorphs, water, and an unknown impurity in the industrial sourced SIC sample. Now, given that the impurity is still unidentified, it has an unknown energy state, performing calorimetry on this sample would provide flawed results and give incorrect information about silicon carbide's thermodynamic properties. So moving forward, future work involves finding a new silicon carbide sample and characterizing it. If characterization proves that the sample is pure, then calorimetric experiments, specifically high temperature oxide melt calorimetry, can be performed to determine the sample's heat of formation. Now this can lead us to understand more about SAC's thermodynamic properties and possibly lead us down the road of material optimization. As acknowledgements, I would like to thank Jerson Lionel for providing guidance and mentorship throughout my work this summer, as well as Dr. Novrazzi for sponsoring my work. Additionally, shown below are my sources used. Lastly, I would like to thank all of you for your time today, and I will now open for questions.